Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant, and this is the news from Kyungi Province this week. This week, GTV examined the changes that are expected in Kyungi Province this year in the fields of economy, transportation, safety, and culture. During the first half of this year, Kyungi Province will introduce regional vouchers, an alternative currency exclusively for use at small businesses in the province. These vouchers will also be used by the provincial government for some welfare payments. 5,000억 원 정도의 그 지역 화폐 발행되면 소상공인네들은 등과 그 영세 상인들한테 큰 혜택이 될 거라고 보고. In February, the Kyungi Province Labor Rights Center will be established at the Northern Kyungi Provincial Government Complex. Its mission is to protect labor rights, eradicate unfair trade, and provide comprehensive labor-related services through efforts ranging from consultations to education. In addition, the Dispute Mediation Council will begin operation in January, assuming the trade-related dispute mediation function of the National Fair Trade Commission. 합리적인 합당한 경쟁이 가능한 그런 경기도를 만들기 위해서 최선을 다하겠습니다. The fruit snack program will be expanded to all child care centers in the province. This will increase the number of children who receive free fruit to 370,000 while providing fruit producers with stable markets. In the transportation field, Kyungi Province will establish free public parking lots utilizing abandoned private land through purchases as well as through space shared with schools and religious institutions. The Kyungi Welfare Taxi and customized bus services in rural regions will be expanded and made available at low costs. 봉두천, 연천 등 4개 시군 4개 노선을 새롭게 추가 선정해서 확대 운행할 계획을 있습니다. 경기도는 맞춤형 버스가 대중교통 서비스 취약 지역 주민들의 발이 될수 있도록 The greatest change in the safety field will be the introduction of the helicopter doctor. This will be the first exclusive medical service helicopter in Korea to operate 24-7 for emergency patient transportation as well as for onboard treatment, including surgery. Gyeonggi Province designated the last Wednesday of every month as Culture Day. Starting this year, on these days, public cultural facilities including museums and art centers in the province will open free of charge or at discounted rates. Last week, Kyungi Province Governor Lee Jae-myung visited the Kyungi Province Call Center. During his visit, Governor Lee experienced the call reception job himself and conversed with call center personnel. For 10 minutes, Governor Lee received calls as a day consultant. During the informal meeting with the phone consultants that followed, Governor Lee expressed the appreciation he felt for their hard work. In response, the consultants expressed their wish to become regular provincial employees. Launched in 2007, the Kyungi Province Call Center has been hiring consultants who currently number 66, through private subcontractors. These subcontracted employees had been excluded from the direct contract-based employees who will become regular employees. However, Governor Lee promised the transfer of the call center consultants to regular employee status despite central government guidelines. <laughs> Governor Lee also took action to improve the call center working environment by instructing the attending officials to install air conditioning, heating, and filtering systems as necessary. On January 3rd, the Kyungi Provincial Administration and the Kyungi Provincial Assembly launched a joint policy council for collaboration on important administrative issues and policies. This council consists of nine members, each from the provincial administration and provincial assembly. The council is chaired jointly by the Kyungi Province Vice Governor for Peace and the Democratic Party of Korea leader in the Kyungi Provincial Assembly, 
with the remaining members forming an executive body. This council will undertake the review of important administrative issues while also engaging in regular discussions on budgets, ordinances, and strategic projects. When required, standing committee chairpersons of the Kyungi Provincial Assembly can also participate in the council meetings. Governor Lee asked these chairpersons to serve the role of local ministers. The Policy Council meeting will take place prior to every Kyungi Provincial Assembly session, its first being slated for February 11th, before the 333rd Extraordinary Session. The Resident Petition System, one of the pledges of the current Kyungi Provincial Administration, began full operation via a recently opened provincial website titled Voice of Kyungi or VOG. In addition to petitions, this website also receives resident suggestions, proposals, and various applications. The first petition received via this website was a request for the provincial administration's special attention to agricultural plant breed development and ownership. Other petitions include those demanding the exclusion of foreign workers from construction worker wage increases and the strengthening of welfare policies for individuals with disabilities. Those petitions that are endorsed by more than 50,000 residents within a month will be answered directly by the governor or other senior officials. This website is also available for administrative policy suggestions and proposals as well as for various resident applications. 경기도의 소리 VOG는 편리하면서도 경제적인 창구입니다. 언제 어디서나 누구나 쉽게 이용할 수 있도록 PC뿐만 아니라 모바일 환경에서도 편리하게 사용하실 수 있습니다. The VOG website combines 15 previous systems for resident petitions, suggestions and applications into a single channel. Through this website, ordinance proposals, which previously required endorsements by more than 100,000 residents, now become valid even with an endorsement by just one person. The single-channel operation also accelerates the processing of resident ideas for administrative improvement as well as for various reports and suggestions. From this year, Kyungi Province will provide middle and high school students who live far from schools with transportation cost support. Every morning, Gang waits for a bus for the 40-minute ride to her school 10 kilometers away. A bus is the only means of transportation she can use to travel to and from school. The problem experienced by Gang is common among many students who live in remote rural areas. This is also one reason why rural families move to cities. 안가오에 애들을 데리고 왔다 갔다 하기가 어렵기 때문에 학교 근처로 이제 이사를 생각할 수밖에 없어요. The student transportation cost support was realized by the recent passage of a related ordinance by the Kyungi Provincial Assembly. According to this ordinance, all middle and high school students who commute more than 3 kilometers will be provided with travel cost support. 농촌 지역 학생들은 거리가 굉장히 멀기 때문에 거리가 굉장히 깁니다. 그로 인해서 학습권 침해를 받고 있고요. 그 조금이라도 그 학습권 침해에 대한 보상이 되지 않아요. Through arrangements with local administrations, Kyungi Province will provide more than 2,500 students in the province with school commuting cost support this year. Kyungi Province announced its transportation projects for this year. Projected to cost a total of 670 billion Korean won, the projects include those that aim to improve transportation safety and convenience, as well as bus driver training programs.
For students and other residents of this remote village, traveling to downtown areas is a difficult task that requires long waiting times for buses that visit their village only six times daily, since the number of passengers do not justify frequent runs. 30분 정도 기다렸다가 탄 적도 있고 눈이 와가지고 아예 운행을 안 해서 그날 아예 못 나간 적도 있어요. This year's transportation projects, which will amount to an estimated 670 billion Korean won, are geared to expand public transportation services to remote regions. These projects include the expansion of customized bus services in remote regions and an increase in the number of low-floor buses for individuals with limited mobility, as well as more double-decker buses and night buses. A new semi-public bus management system that combines bid-based route assignment is also being reviewed. 도민에게 없어서는 안 되는 노선들에 대해서 노선 입찰을 통해서 제공하게 되겠습니다. 여기에 참여하는 노선은 민간 소유가 아닌 공공에서 갖고 있는 노선이 되겠습니다. Gyeonggi Province plans to train 2,000 bus drivers so as to address the driver shortage that is expected due to the reduction of working hours. Other transportation projects include the installation of automatic braking systems on buses, as well as the establishment of free parking lots utilizing unused spaces. Last month, Gyeonggi Province Governor Lee Jae-myung received a plaque of appreciation from the residents of Dongducheon City for his contribution to the launch of the city's anti-flooding project. The area in Dongducheon City where two streams merge is prone to flooding during rainy seasons. The ideal solution is to build a dike at a strategic location. However, this project has been hindered since this location is within Camp Mobile of the U.S. military. After visiting the site, Gyeonggi Province Governor Lee Jae-myung formed a task force of senior officials and began taking action to resolve the problem. Governor Lee also personally discussed the matter with the President of Korea. At a subsequent SOFA meeting, the U.S. military gave approval for the commencement of work within Camp Mobile before they vacate the camp. The city administration now plans begin anti-flooding work in January for completion in June. Gyeonggi Province will continue to resolve ongoing problems through active administration initiatives. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.